Hey everyone, so today we're going to talk to you about how we can organize our loading strategies within the context of someone expressing a hyperextension at the knee or an early extension at the knee during gait. Now this hyperextension or early extension at the knee may or may not be uh, something that coexists with the pain experience at the knee and it may or may not be something that we want to change therapeutically. But we're going to discuss this movement feature within the context of how the lower limb as a whole is managing and distributing forces across the entire lower limb. And then we're going to go through two separate strategies that are often used to address this. The first one is one that's typically used and one that we wouldn't necessarily incorporate early on. And the second one that we'll show you is one that we typically use early on during the rehab process. Okay, so the two key features that we're going to discuss here in this video, firstly, is the capacity to slow down or delay the shortening of the distal quadriceps as we pass over the stance limb during gait. And secondly, is the capacity to distribute that workload into the forefoot and as a result into the plantar flexors to express a plantar flexion isometric behavior to allow us to pass over that stance limb and propel forward. That isometric behavior of the plantar flexors allows the Achilles to lengthen and shorten and store that elastic energy to assist in the propulsion phase. Okay, now of course we, we also do need to appreciate the, the, um, the contractile behavior of the distal hamstrings and the proximal gastrocnemius to decelerate that knee extension to try and reduce that, that knee hyperextension or that early extension during the mid stance of gait. But we're going to focus on the, uh, the distal plantar flexors here, their isometric capacity, and also the, the quadriceps as well, the distal quadriceps. Okay. So the first thing that we'll, we need to consider as well is that typically the, um, the knee hyperextension or the early knee extension is typically observed during the mid stance of gait and that's where the, um, the tibia will progress forward. So again we have that early stance as we move into the mid stance phase that's when we'll see that tibia progressing forward. As that tibia progresses forward we're going we're gonna to feel that load distribute from the heel into the forefoot and as a result into the plantar flexors so they can express that isometric behavior. Now if we can't handle that workload or if we can't um, manage those forces through the plantar flexors isometrically then typically what we'll see is we'll see this early extension of the tibia or this shifting of the tibia backwards where the load goes from the forefoot into the heel and so that would re reflect that early knee extension okay and then as a result we won't be able to distribute that force through the forefoot, through the plantar flexors, take advantage of the Achilles to propel us forward. We'll typically use more proximal leading strategy. Okay. Secondly, in that scenario, when the tibia progresses forward, we're going to feel some load into the distal quadriceps. The distal quadriceps have to be able to manage some of that load as the tibia flexes. If the tibia flexes and the distal quadriceps can't handle or manage that workload through them, then Typically, we're going to see this early knee extension as well, where the knee expresses more of a closed pack position. That closed pack position, when the knee extends, is going to reduce the workload on the distal quadricep and bring us into a position where there's less variability. Okay, so you can almost think of it as an early screw home mechanism where we're searching for that stability, if you like, where there's less variability between the femur and the tibia, and where there's less variability, there's less there's less of a challenge on the muscular tissues because now we're in a closed pack position, okay? But what it does do is it, is it reduces, uh, it sacrifices adaptability, it sacrifices load sharing capacities across the limb, okay? So you, you, you'll see here that again, lack of uh, isometric behavior at the plantar flexors and a lack of load capacity into the distal quadriceps, okay? Those are two things that we need to consider. In the next video, we're gonna show you one strategy that's typically used. And the second video, we're going to show you the, um, the strategy that we would typically use to try and address these movement features. So this step down strategy is one that's commonly used to concentrate the flexion at the ankle and the knee and especially concentrate that load into the distal quad. But the issue here is that it doesn't really teach us to coordinate that plantar flexion isometric behavior at the ankle and maintain that positive shin angle as we progress forward. It also doesn't really teach us to delay or slow down that shortening of the distal quad. It's just really teaching us to control the tibia as it flexes forward on the way down and then drive it back as we generate the force to push us up and back, which just really shifts us back into the heel. So a strategy that we like to use much more so early on is a strategy that will allow us to challenge the the isometric behavior of the plantar flexors while simultaneously slowing down or delaying that shortening of the distal quadriceps 
thereby increasing the time under tension that the distal quadriceps are expressing, all while we direct that force up and forward. And that up and forward direction of force is, um, is very important because it allows us to, main, it makes it more easy uh, or easier for us to express and maintain that positive shin angle instead of going completely straight up and vertical, where we'll typically see that extension of the knee much sooner, or that hyperextension of the knee much sooner, okay? So we'll typically begin seated, um, where we have a bit more flexion across the hip, the knee, and the ankle at the start. It's more of a concentric focus here, where we're building pressure into the ground, directing up and forward, then we can reset back to the starting position. We'll also have the, uh, the chair set up in front of the wall, and have the hands on the wall for contact and support, which makes it easier for us to direct that force up and forward, versus if we had nothing in front of us, it's a little bit more dip difficult to um, direct that force up and forward, okay? So the, the right lower limb is going to be the, the target limb. We're going to set up that limb uh, at, a, at an angle where the, the tibia expresses more of a forward shin angle, a positive angle, where the knee is either over the toes or in front of the toes. Okay, the non-target limb, the left leg, we want the toes and the knees to be a bit more flexed so the toes are in line with the back heel here. Okay, so we want most of the load being distributed through the, the right side, obviously, in this case. We're going to have the hands on the wall. When it comes to the spinal position, you can have a bit more of a flexion bias in the spine. That's going to allow us to get a bit more load into the knee itself. Um, or you can express more of an extended um, spinal position, more of a hinge position, where we're going to get a little bit more load distributed into the hips as well. But it's, it's dependent on what your goals are. What we're going to do then is we're going to maintain that positive shin angle. We're going to hover the heel very slightly so we can challenge that isometric behavior at the, at the plantar flexors. We're going to try and maintain that same heel hover. We don't want it to come up. We don't want it to drop down to the ground. We want to maintain that heel position throughout. Hands in the wall. We're going to let the body lean forward so our nose is over our toes so we can get that load into the foot more easily. And it's going to be super slow motion on the, the ascent here. So nose over the toes, push down through the, the forefoot, and then we're building pressure up and forward. So you can see I'm maintaining that positive shin angle. I'm keeping that heel in the same position. You can see the challenge at the, the lower limb as I extend the hips forward, okay? We'll go through that again. So you can see I'm maintaining that forward shin angle throughout. I'm maintaining that same heel hover position throughout. Building pressure down, slightly in forward to so the nose over the toes. Build pressure and I'm directing the force up. Super slow motion and forward, okay? And obviously having the wall in front makes it much easier to do that. Okay, so it's a simultaneous challenge of um, plantar flexion isometric behavior at the ankle while we're slowing down or the delaying or delaying that shortening of the distal quadriceps which increases the, the tension through the quadriceps throughout the ascent. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of what's going on when we see this knee hyperextension or this early extension at the knee during gait and how we can organize our loading strategies to better coordinate the muscular tissues but also the joint segmental structures too to restore load sharing across the entire lower limb.